What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final, final little pass is a business. A dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, your horror safe haven. I'm Chelsea. I just spit all over myself. I'm James, and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we're married, and we like to get scared together. Oh, man. Full disclosure. We started recording this yesterday. Yeah, started and got 40 minutes in. We got 40 minutes in and we realized my microphone wasn't plugged in. It's entirely my fault. It's not been our weekend. No. Here at Dead Meat, but it has not. We're powering through yeah. to give you content and to pay our bills. We're talking about bodies, bodies, bodies today. Bodies, 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 bodies. bodies, bodies. Like if you saw the commercials, the, trailer. the trailers, it's how it always ends. Bodies, bodies, bodies. Bodies, bodies, bodies. bodies. Yeah, this is a great movie. A lot, of, a lot of chatter about it a couple of weeks ago when it came out. Yeah, and everyone. And then we were like, we'll get to it. And yeah, and now we're finally getting to it. And now it doesn't seem like anyone fucking cares about it. Everyone just wants us to review Barbarian, which is fair. I had to mute Barbarian on Twitter. I did the same thing. Yeah, I, I'm getting Can't be getting those, nervous. those Barbie spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, you'll eat your body's body's bodies and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And we'll give you Barbarian some other time yes. when we can make our way to the theater again after Moonage Daydream. Oh, yeah. That's number one now. Yes, bodies, bodies, bodies. Uh, real fun time. I love this movie. This is it's a movie. It's so much fun. It was an enjoyable watch. And then <laughs> after we got back from it the rest of the night, we kept being like, hey, remember when that happened? And just kept laughing and having these realizations that made the movie even funnier. And now... Yeah, the reveal of the, I guess, twist of this movie or the reveal of the end really makes the movie so much funnier in retrospect. <laughs> I think that this is a movie where it's important to know the tone when you're going in. It's kind of like malignant in that regard because if you go into it with the wrong expectations, you might not enjoy yourself. So that's why I feel like bodies, bodies, bodies... Uh, we won't spoil plot or anything, but I do think it's good to know that it is a comedy. It's just that everything's played really straight. It's all played, yeah, like you said, it's played straight. It's not the characters trying to be funny within the script. Mm -hmm. They're all playing it very serious, and these characters are written to be real people. But that's what makes them so funny is yes, their because, characters are so funny. Because they take themselves so seriously. Mm -hmm. And this is also the movie that I think since Scream came out, the original Scream, I think that this is the movie closest to it in maybe not necessarily tone, but just spirit. Because Scream did such a good job outside of the metatextual, like, this is what horror movies are like and what we all expect from them. It was also a good little capturing of that zeitgeist of 1996 teenagers and Gen X specifically. And Bodies, Bodies, Bodies feels that way with regard to Gen, Gen Z. Uh, this is two millennials saying that. So maybe we're wrong and maybe some Gen Zers are watching and be like, no, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is what old people think Gen Z are like. But... The cast, I believe, had a lot of input in the dialogue and obviously with their performances. And they're all like 25 in this movie yeah, when they filmed it. Yeah, aside from Lee Pace. Aside from Lee Pace, whose age is a factor in it. He's like 42 or 43, early 40s. Mm -hmm. And it's it provides a hilarious contrast, especially with some of the reveals later on. But yeah, most of the cast is 25. Pete Davidson a little bit older at 27. And the lead, uh, Amanda Stemberg, uh, or at least top build, is the youngest at, like, 23. But she's been acting a while. She was Rue. Yeah, she's Rue in Hunger Games. Remember when everyone got pissed off about that? Not everyone. A stupid, lot of people. Stupid people. Yeah. <laughs> well, good for her. She made it out of the Hunger Games and into another movie where she's uh, trying to not get killed. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's like she's in another death game kind of movie. Yeah. And that's the other thing is I had the impression kind of that this would be a slasher, but it's not. It's not. A because slasher. slashers, they really like focus on the kills and, and relish in them. This is more of an Agatha Christie uh, and then there were none like murder mystery. It's a whodunit and all the deaths happen off screen. Yeah. Or at so least most of them. Most of them. So you're finding the bodies rather than seeing people get killed. So definitely not a slasher. But, uh, yeah, it's a funny movie that really takes a critical look at 
a certain subsection of Gen Z, I'd say. It doesn't necessarily have to lambast the entire generation, but it is poking fun at certain tendencies of modern day youths, especially ones who are more well off and kind of uh, have an idea that image is more important than anything else. These are very vapid characters. Yeah, it's kind of twofold. One of them is, I think it's kind of making fun of the way that we all talk to each other now, especially, like, I'm super duper online. I'm always on Twitter, and this also kind of, it just reminds me of of Twitter discourse, yeah, kind of. They even, sure. I think Pete Davidson says something about Twitter when his girlfriend says that she, he's gaslighting her and he that just sets him off and he's like that doesn't mean anything now you just sound like everyone else on twitter kind of thing yeah and it's very true it does kind of feel like some of those conversations you'll see online where it's like people will in an effort to not be the wrong one in an argument or a debate will then kind of uh it's like this competition to see who is more, um, who has it worse in life, mm -hmm. kind of. Uh, it's like almost a privilege competition where... You're trying to be the victim or trying to show that, like, you have it worse off. Yeah, like which kind of comes into what you were saying. The characters are really well off. That is, there is a point in the movie where characters are downplaying how wealthy they actually are. And that's, like, something that is really important to them. Yeah, this is also a movie where pretty much all the characters are bad people. Uh, just like, just annoying, selfish, self-centered, mostly people. And except for Lee Pace again. Except for Lee Pace uh, again. And then I guess the like bees. She Although, is. Although to be fair, she does something. That that is probably my one complaint with the movie, and we'll we'll talk about it. Just interesting because I think it says a lot about her as a hmm. character too. So I don't necessarily have a problem with it okay we'll, we'll get into it anything else we should say at the top before we uh get into the spoiler part it was directed by helena rain i don't know if that's how you say her name she is a dutch uh actress primarily this oh, okay. is her second directorial effort and her first in english this is her first directed english film uh fucking nailed it this movie looks cool a lot of great Inventive, creative lighting. Yeah, this movie's technically really well done, yeah. considering how... I, I think that's something where maybe most people aren't going to pick up on how difficult it kind of is to do something like this, because it seems really bare bones. The A lot of scenes, the lighting is just phone uh, flashlights. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the times people are walking around with the flashlight on their phone and then their screen illuminated too to light yeah, themselves. Yeah, to light their faces. So this is one of those movies where the cast had to kind of work double duty and also uh, work almost as grips or DPs lighting themselves. Mm -hmm. I was reading some interviews uh, with the director and, and the cinematographer and they were talking about how, yeah, like the they had to direct the actors to like shine their lights in certain places. And what's also interesting is we'll get into it later, but the characters all have different forms of lighting themselves. And those forms kind of speak specifically to them as individuals, which is really Ooh, fun. That's interesting. Yeah. I was reading this interview that I was like, Oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's one of those movies where like a lot of thought went into it. Yeah, It yeah. seems like a simple premise and it is, but they take that premise and they execute it to an amazing manner. Technically, uh, the acting is so fucking good. Everyone on this cast is it's hilarious. It's so funny. Yeah, it's, it's very funny. Uh, see it with a group of people who will laugh. We saw it in a theater that Weird like... theater. It was like 10 other people in it maybe. And at times we were the only ones laughing. Yeah, it didn't feel great. It just, <laughs> I don't know. It just was not... I just wanted a bit more excitement for this movie. I don't think they got it. And yeah. to be fair, you know... It's a very specific tone where if you don't realize that it's meant to be funny, you might be like, what the, what the fuck is... That? Like I said, Malignant is... Mm -hmm. is, is They're nothing alike. They're not anything alike. But it, they're movies where you kind of have to be in on the joke to fully enjoy and appreciate it, I would say. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked that this was a first English language directorial effort because so much of this movie, like revolves around the way these characters talk to each other that is so specifically like of a certain age and a very american feeling to me and i don't i don't know that i think that's just really impressive well a lot of it 
I think, like I said, the cast had a lot to do with the dialogue. Uh, the writer is an American writer. Uh, I, I guess it went through a bunch of different scripts. Oh, yeah, because one of the writers is the woman who wrote that Cat People article. Cat, oh. Or oh. Cat Person. Wait. Do you remember that? Vaguely, I remember. Where it went viral on Twitter. It was yeah. this, like. Was she in the wrong? The writer? Eh. What's the, what's, remind me? So she. Go blue. You go blue. She is a master's of fine <laughs> Wait, arts. Wait, which, which uh, writer? Is it Kristen Ropanian or is it Sarah Delap? Yes, yeah. Kristen? Yeah. Okay, she has the story by credit. Yeah. So I think she wrote the initial script and then it was taken and rewritten. Uh, oh, you're right. Yeah, Cat Person, 2017. Cat Person. Yeah, University of Michigan, uh, master's graduate, go blue. Yeah. Uh, so she wrote this short story in the New York Times, I think, that went crazy. The New Yorker. Or the New Yorker, I'm sorry, that went super viral on Twitter. Like, I remember reading it. It was, it was a whole thing. And then, yeah, it turned out that, like, someone claimed that it was taken from details of her life. I don't want to get, like, too much into it, but it was this weird, murky thing. And I still don't know how I feel about it of, like, you know write like writers when you're if you're going to come up with the most authentic kind of writing you're encouraged even to to write what you know right mm -hmm. you're always told write what real you know life experiences yeah yeah and it sounds like she did that but what happens when someone realizes that you that they've been written about like mm -hmm. are, is it your responsibility to change things just enough to i, I don't like i don't know okay so she wrote this spec script bodies okay. bodies bodies and it was pretty much entirely rewritten by uh sarah delap who wrote the wolves uh, a play like an okay. off-broadway play so uh, i don't know how much if anything of Kristen ropanian's original stories stood through but, uh, yeah, it seems like it was a very collaborative effort between the director, the writer, the actors, uh, cinematographer Jasper Wolf. Uh, just, yeah. Oh, and the music by Disasterpiece, mm -hmm. who scored It Follows, one of my favorite horror scores. Uh, their music is amazing. And then just the sound design yeah, the separate sound. from the music. I wrote a few times in my notes how much I loved the sound just at different parts because it takes place during a hurricane. So you've got this, like, rain and kind of like on and off storm in the background and just the way that levels shift depending on what's going on like when they're all walking through the house and it's all just dark and they have their phone flashlights on you can just hear them just all the, the like really heightened sounds of them walking and their clothes rustling and stuff and I don't, I don't know it just is like really nicely done it's great mm -hmm. it's very good movie i recommend you see it it's only in theaters right now no streaming services but it's been out for a minute so i don't know when i think uh i saw the blu-ray actually comes out early october this year so okay uh maybe uh rush job kill count because i really like this movie yeah and uh i think it'd be fun to do it'd be a hard kill count because as the, you're recapping the movie and you're saying how characters die that's kind of just giving away the end of nah, the movie. I've got it. You got it? I've, do, I've been doing this for five years. Sure, I know, okay. I know how to thread the line okay. into not lying, but also not spoiling. Okay. I got it. It actually would be, I, I'm thinking, an easier episode because a lot of it, they're walking around looking for each other. Yeah. There's, you know? there's not a ton of plot as much as there is. There's a lot of character stuff. It's a lot of character stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That I would have to breeze through because can't include every funny line. It'd be every fucking line. Mm -hmm. All right. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies opens on uh, like a minute long makeout sesh right up in the mouth. Yes, two of chicks. Two chicks making out. Ha <laughs> ha. Got the HLA. That's me mashing their faces together. <laughs> it's, uh, it's more like. Yeah. A lot of that. A lot of that in the movie. God, uh, the filter that I run the audio through to remove mouth clicks is going to go nuts over that part. <laughs> it's not going to know what to do. Like, are, do you want this here? Like, <laughs> do you want these sounds or do you want me to take them out? I feel like having this be <laughs> the opening is like, this movie is about Gen Z. Gen Z, super gay and okay talking about stuff like that. If you're uncomfortable, maybe get, get out of the, the theater, out. dude. Yeah. And I, I've heard of people, people walking out during this first too. shot. I mean... To be fair, it does go from the makeout immediately into uh, a little crotch bit of finger grab. banging, banging. Yeah, yeah, some crotch grabbing. Uh, although, like, I saw a family left. I'm like, why did you take the kids there? Yeah, that's a weird it's one. It's a horror movie. Don't take your kids unless you're prepared for 
up to and including crotch grabbing. <laughs> it just the idea of like someone being okay with I'm gonna bring my small child to a movie where there's like murder where I'm I'm assuming there's murder in it. It's in called bodies, 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 bodies yeah, and it's probably. marketed as a horror film. But like, oh god, two women making out with each other. That's the gross part. Even the crotch grab is it's above the clothes. Whatever. There's actually there's no nudity in this movie. Didn't you say that someone complained about the cleavage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't, I'm so glad you brought it up because I said on the way home from the movie, I was like, I'll just explain it on the podcast. Cause, yeah. Uh, okay. So the person who wrote the review for this for the New York Times, which is why I was thinking of the New York Times earlier when we were talking about cat person, uh, is this woman named Lena Wilson. Ooh, Doxiner. She was the main character of the internet that day, is, oh, is all I'll say. I'm not adding too much to the pile by saying her name. <laughs> like She kind of did it to herself. <laughs> she wrote a, a pretty bad review of this movie for the New York Times. And in it, she complained about like how much cleavage there was in this movie, which is weird because there's not really. There's one scene of everyone in the pool. Yeah. And then... Like, one of the characters has a low-cut shirt. Yeah. That's it. Like, I guess it... I think she calls it a walking advertisement for cleavage. And it's like, because they have boobs? Like, it's not like <laughs> it's focused on them. It's not at and all. And then what happened was Amanda Stenberg messaged her on Instagram and said... She was the one with the low-cut shirt. <laughs> Maybe you would have liked the movie better if you'd taken your eyes off my boobs. Then this reviewer makes a, I think, a TikTok. Uh, I don't want anything else to come of this. I am devastated to have received this message in the first place. I was a genuine, huge fan of hers. But I'm posting it because I don't want this person who has more social power than me to think that it's fucking okay to do something like this. And that's all. And then that's when people found this video th that she made on TikTok like a few months ago where she talks about like how I got my job writing for the New York Times and it just was like, I come from a family of writers. I'm a reader. Writing has come naturally to me for my entire life. I have received awards and praise and other forms of success for it always. And I have never received any kind of formal schooling in arts criticism, but here I am. Again, not a flex, just a fact. The first thing I ever wrote for the New York Times, I wrote it 24 years old. It was barely edited and it made the front page of the culture section. So that's what I'm working with. Turns out her dad like works for the New York Times. And so it just... The reason I bring all this up is because it's incredible that she could have walked out of this movie. She literally is the exact kind of person that this movie's making fun of, and that's why it was so fucking funny. Okay. It's like Logan Paul tweeting about Nope. Yes. It really... <laughs> It, I love how often horror movies, for some reason, really get people to just show their asses because they don't understand what they're watching. Anyway, that was the Twitter drama. Okay. And this is why I can't leave Twitter, because I have to know all this stuff. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Amanda Stenberg, as you mentioned, is the lead. She's Sophie, and her girlfriend is B, uh, who is played by... Borat's daughter. Borat's daughter. <laughs> Ma Maria Bakalova, who I is fucking hilarious and the highlight of Borat 2, which yes. I personally think is maybe the better Borat movie. It's the kinder Borat film. It's the better made film. Yes. They're both nice little captures of the zeitgeist at the time. Very different zeitgeist. Yeah, yeah. But Maria Bakalova was the, the breakout star of that. She was fucking phenomenal. And here she is playing a much more grounded character. Yeah, I would say she's Cher's main character status with Amandla. Yeah, I keep saying uh, main character because Amandla is top build, but really it's more from the perspective of Maria Bakalova. It's more from B's perspective. She, I think B is probably the only character it feels pretty safe as an audience, assuming that she's not the killer. Yeah, because we see her discover bodies and her genuine reaction. Yeah. So pretty early on, I'm like, Oh, okay, so it's not her. Uh, yeah, she is a Eastern European, it's never defined, uh, kind of working class young woman as the Wikipedia discover, uh, describes it. Okay. I know at one point the other characters ask her, are you Russian? And she just says no and doesn't uh, elaborate. The actress is Bulgarian, mm -hmm. and I guess we can assume the character is too, but she she's pretty guarded about her history, and that ends up being a factor, but... No surprise that she's guarded. She's being taken by her very wealthy new girlfriend. They've only been together six weeks to a party at a fucking giant mansion with other very rich 
tight knit people with a lot of drama swirling around. Yeah. This would suck. This is such a nightmare. I, <laughs> I mean, I've been the like person hanging out with a, an established friend group. I think most people can relate to that and how much it sucks. But then also to add to that is the weird like class disparity that I would all that just makes my skin crawl. Like college was the first time I was ever around people who I realized grew up with money. Mm-hmm. And it's a weird thing. I mean, this is money. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. This is like, this is like, these characters are wealthy. But I also like going to college. I met like out of state students from the East Coast who like their lives just seem completely foreign to anything I could ever imagine experiencing. Like to me, my rich friends growing up were the ones that lived in a two story house. Mm hmm. Yeah, they are they're in like a ready or not sized mansion here. The it belongs to Pete Davidson's character's family. Mm-hmm. He plays David. I want to know what all these characters' parents do. Yeah, I'm sure it's like inherited old inherited money. Inherited or like you know. Yeah, right. It probably is just old money or just Based pharmaceuticals. On... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like uh weapons manufacturing i can't think of any many other fields where you're gonna get that wealthy it's enormous and they even say later the characters talk about how sophie and david are rich rich like a level above it sounds the like rest sophie's of parents are the wealthiest yeah you're right because didn't they say something about her house being even bigger than david's yeah but as we will come to learn sophie has had some addiction problems has uh had to go to the hospital three separate times for uh, overdoses and so her parents have cut her off and when she shows up to this party all the other friends are like we haven't seen you in forever like it's shocking that you're even here and we see that one of the reasons she's here is to talk to David who she's like best friends with and to see if he can talk to her parents about getting her access to her family money again because I think their their families go back and friends she mentions him being like a preschool boyfriend before she learned she was gay right so um there's that dynamic going on and you know one of the things that's really cool about this movie and something that you said is how good it is at relaying exposition Mm -hmm. it doesn't do it all in one dump it doesn't do it awkwardly with like oh well this is my friend who just like yeah all at once in unnatural dialogue oh you know i started dating them a few years ago and yeah yeah it's it's meted out in a natural way and it's done in a way where you know what you need to know about the characters at any given time and you begin to figure it out for yourself through context clues so that later when they reference things and relationships you're just like oh yes that that slots in with what i had already assumed like it right. just reinforces the stuff that you're getting it's it's a very well written script yeah and it puts you in the place of the main character too where mm-hmm. you're just kind of observing and trying to figure out how everyone is related to each other exactly Not literally you're, but you you're know. like B and you're you're just listening to the conversations and trying to figure out like how everyone feels about each other which is superficially friends it's been, it's been so long but you just fucking hate each other I just realized when they walk into the party everyone else is in the pool just under the surface I wonder if that's like symbolism for how these characters are you know have a different way how they are just under the surface maybe yeah I don't know they're all under the surface of the pool holding their breath some cool underwater shots and as they see Sophie show up they they one by one surface and are like oh hey Lee Pace is the last one to come up and immediately makes himself my favorite character being like did I win I told you I have big lungs. Yeah, he's so proud of himself. <laughs> yeah, so the characters here uh, are Pete Davidson. He owns the house. He's David. Um, his girlfriend is Emma. Emma, who is like an actress. They keep mentioning this project that she was in. She seems very... Um, is she? I wonder if she's an actress in the way that like Willa on Succession is an actress. Dude, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like she's she, been in something and she calls herself an actress, but like... She's aspiring. <laughs> yeah, it is aspi- <laughs> Like how much of the work is she putting in and how much of it is like... I'm, well, I'm hot. I'm hot. Yeah. yeah, I'm hot and therefore I should be in... <laughs> In movies and TV. Yeah. yeah. Emma is uh, maybe the least developed character, but you get a little bit more later on. She's just, you know, very self-centered, um, very uh, emotional, maybe, or just manipulative. Yeah. I don't think she's... she's very pretty and expects everyone to like her. Yeah. I think is the vibe I get from her. 
That sounds And also right. she seems like the kind of person who will, I mean, the characters make fun of her because she does cry a lot, but she seems like the kind of character who will, if she's losing an argument with you, will just start crying. So you're instantly the bad one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's Emma. That's David's girlfriend. Uh, there's also Jordan, who is this, um, I don't know, feisty little woman. She's very uh, uh, no nonsense, very... Um, she, she she would be the like I'm not mean I'm just honest friend when like she's just kind of mean. Yes, is yeah. the is the energy she I is get from never that looking to de-escalate any situations, which <laughs> happens literally later on. Yeah. She is a very um yeah pugnacious individual. Uh, so that's Jordan, and she seems to have a past with Sophie. Yeah, uh, uh, very turbulent past seemed like they were maybe on again off again girlfriends and even early on she confronts b and is like oh you've been with her six weeks so good job but it's gonna fall apart something yeah she definitely projects a lot onto b and i think you know something i'm assuming went wrong with her and sophie and so she that's why she confronts b and is like it's basically a oh this happened to me so it's gonna happen to you because that couldn't have been because of me Mm -hmm. yeah uh and there's alice Oh, man. Alice is so fucking funny. Played by Rachel Sennett. Yeah. Rachel Sennett is... This whole cast is great. Rachel is kind of the breakout. Yeah. Like, the, all the conversations I see online are like, Alice was fucking hilarious. She's so funny. She's so funny. And you don't expect this character to really stand out that much, I guess, when we're first meeting them all. It just seems like, oh, she's like a party girl. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, yes, bitch. Like, that mm-hmm. kind of... But, like... <laughs> she is so fucking funny. Uh, she has a podcast, uh, mm-hmm. and she... It's all about hanging out with your funniest and smartest friend. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think that's what she describes it as. Yeah. Which, like, I love that because that is just the boilerplate description for every fucking <laughs> podcast. <laughs> she, as opposed to Jordan, is not one to kind of escalate things. She seems like she more has to uh, always be liked and by everyone and is trying to please everyone. I've noticed that in scenes where other characters are arguing, whoever's talking is who she's agreeing with. Yeah. Where she's like, yeah, that's mm, The that's last true. person who said something is the one she agrees yeah. with, for sure. Mm-hmm. Which is hilarious the way that, like... Again, this happens very late in the movie where she's, like, agreeing with the last person. And it just played so straight that if you don't really pick up on it you might be like wait i thought that she was like mad at her it's like no that's just the character she's just going to agree with whoever said something (laughs) she doesn't want like she's not here for the drama she like i don't think she's a character who would necessarily enjoy being involved in drama but maybe just likes watching people argue and therefore will be a confusing uh bystander (laughs) where she's not helping to like de-escalate but she's just kind of along for the ride a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, she has brought along her brand new boyfriend of two weeks, Greg. Greg. Played by Lee Pace. Yeah. Uh, again, as we said, most of these actors who we've just talked about are like 25. Not Greg. Greg is like 40 something mm-hmm. because it's Lee Pace, the six foot five ripped Adonis wonderful yeah. man he's got the long hair he's like he's one of those they, beautiful men on the planet yeah they say he's a vet he is just this this hunk of man who is he has big lungs and uh he's fantastic yeah, clear, and, yeah just like they're all like climbing around on him at one point because <laughs> they're all getting in like an altercation and it's like that's so cool good for them <laughs> pete davidson <laughs> Is not a fan of Lee Pace. He's so d- it is Lee Pace is the perfect character to have another male character be irrationally jealous of and threatened by. Like Pete Davidson, you know, youth isn't everything, but you're young, dude. You're rich. You don't really need to be jealous of Lee Pace, but I get it. Right. It, it's also like I don't know. I guess living the life that Pete Davidson does. I I mean, it's just money can't buy you happiness. I I guess guess so. Abs can, though. Apparently, Lee Pace is very seems very uh, confident. He just seems like a much older, uh, more self realized human being. Granted, he is in his forties, dating like a twenty five year old. Don't know what's going on with that, but he does seem to be the most grounded and um, self confident 
individual. Yeah. Uh, at one point, he even goes into Pete Davidson's house and just finds a Gurkha sword on the, on the wall and just takes it and a bottle of champagne and fucking slices yeah, it open. Yeah, fucking cool. It's, it's called sabering, apparently. Yeah. Uh, yeah, opening a bottle it with a sword. It Pete Davidson. Yeah, he's like, oh, don't give my parents Gurkha sword or yeah. my champagne. Yeah, it's the, his dad's champagne, too, which is really expensive. <laughs> it's just getting everywhere. They're yeah, like- <laughs> yeah, very sloppy poor. Yeah. They're all here for a hurricane party. Yeah. Which uh, we said in our lost to time recording, you said that it, it is another sign of privilege. Yeah, I remember, I, I forget what hurricane it was during, but on... Like Twitter, Instagram, people were sharing, oh, we're having a hurricane party. And it was usually like seemingly well off, usually white people. And the idea of having a hurricane party, you have to be living somewhere that you know is not going to fall apart during a hurricane. You have to be pretty financially secure to just not be worried and to to find this instead an opportunity to like oh we're gonna all gonna hang out and have a party and it's just fun at one point they even they have the news on a tv and they're talking about the hurricane on the news and they're like oh turn that off it's such a bummer yeah yeah they're, they yeah it's just too too sad to listen to the actual effects of the hurricane right. because the house they're in ain't going nowhere like right. that thing is gonna withstand any and it would be fun no this would be really really cool yeah especially because uh they decide to play a game uh called bodies 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 which is also if you didn't know title of the movie but it's kind of a werewolf type game it's a hidden identity game yeah it's so what it is is they pass around little slips of paper and whoever draws the x is the murderer whoever gets the paper with the x or yeah whoever receives the paper Mm -hmm. with the x stupid English language (laughs) um and so they turn all the lights off in the house and uh basically the murderer has to like tap someone on the shoulder and that person like falls down dead and what as soon as someone else discovers the body they all bodies 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 and all the lights come back on they have to debate and figure out who killed that person and then they basically they vote someone out and if it's not the murderer then it keeps going and you said you played a version called assassin or something like that i forget it was called assassin assassin was something different Mm -hmm. uh but it was a version of that where um you have one person who's the murderer and instead you're all kind of like walking around like a, either a big room or like a house. A reasonable size Yeah, house. this yeah. is for a smaller scale <laughs> uh, version of this game where you can't just have like tons of little hiding spots and stuff. But the, the murderer, like you're all shaking hands with each other and the murderer basically tickles the inside of your palm to like murder someone. And then if you feel that person, you count like a few seconds and then you fall over dead and then everyone has to like kind of reverse engineer who it could have been. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's the, the plebe version. Yeah. When you yeah. don't have a giant mansion to go around playing this game. That sounds like a lot of fun, but also sounds like a game where, you know, a few people in, it's probably just going to fall apart and people are going to get bored and distracted and go do something else. Um, because it's hard to keep people on track with games, yes, uh, with parlor games especially large groups. And these people are all real fucked up. Yeah. They're doing all sorts of drugs and drinking. They're all slapping each other and doing shots. Oh, yeah. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, they're, they're all doing drugs and drinking except for Sophie, except Sophie because yeah. she is sober now. She went to rehab. And she says that. And I forget which one is just like, good for you. Like, oh, good for you. Yeah, it's something. probably Alice because she's the kind of person who would, like can say – is the kind of person that stresses me out to be around because Alice is the kind of friend question mark who could say something like, Oh, good for you. And I, I have no idea how to take that. I feel like you're insulting me and I can't put my finger on why, like everything that comes out of her mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Sophie and David, like I mentioned, are really good friends. They have a scene together before all the partying starts where it's just the two of them talking. And I think that scene is really important uh, just to, to see them as people because everyone is, you know, to borrow your favorite phrase, going to show their asses soon in this movie and reveal themselves as like shitty people. But it's nice to see that they – can also have a genuine human connection. These two seem like they're sincerely friends and have a much more authentic relationship than some of the other combinations of the groups. So I like seeing the two of them together. Uh, During this scene, 
when Pete Davidson is complaining about Lee Pace, he says, uh, I think I'm as attractive as him. I just look like I fuck, <laughs> which I guess. I mean, he, he does. He does. So I guess that's true. In real life. He's, and I forgot to mention, he's walking around this whole movie with a big old black eye because that's oh, the other yeah. thing. Oh yeah, they, I forgot. They keep fucking talking about this Max guy yeah. who is who was there, but he left before Sophie <laughs> and B got there because last night they took shrooms. Max declared his love for Emma, punched David in the face and left that morning. I just want to say that did also remind me that this whole time I've been wearing a hashtag Minion Squad t-shirt and just haven't mentioned it. I did in the episode that was lost, but forgot to this time. <laughs> There's like three people who've seen this movie and understand why I'm wearing a Minion Squad shirt. Yep. I'll explain it later. Yeah. But thank you for reminding me on accident. This, this whole fucking time, they're talking about this Max guy. And I'm like, all right, if Max is the killer, it's going to be very unsatisfying. Yeah. You can't just talk about someone and say he's maybe in the house. Like maybe he came back without telling anyone. And But like, we it's have fine. to see him because they, they talk about yeah, him. Yeah, they so talk much. about so him like, so much that I'm like, "What are we doing with Max?" Yeah, it's fine. It's it's a it's a good addition to the who done it aspect of the movie because there's always that like, maybe it's that Max guy. Yeah, I, we don't know who that guy. It also punched- is a reveal that's very special to me specifically. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll get to that. So, oh yeah, we forgot the, when they're asking if she's Russian. Uh, Dr. Zivago is my Dr. favorite Zivago's movie. Dr. is my favorite movie. <laughs> yeah. So they're doing drugs. They're drinking. They decide to play bodies, bodies, bodies. Emma doesn't want to because someone always cries when they play. It's always her. It sounds like it gets mean. Mm-hmm. People always start fighting. With it. People always start fighting. That's what makes it fun. Our lines from both the movie and our and real lives. And our life. I'm the but that's what makes it fun person. People, it's hard to get enough people to want to play certain kinds of games with me because everyone just gets mad. And I revel in everyone getting pissed off at each other during those. Because I just feel like what happens in those games stays in those games. I agree with but that. But for some people, that's not the case. Well, I just feel like that that's the case for all games except for Black Magic, which is It's not be, a game even. That's like a. That's, that's a hazing it's not is what it is. It's like a group. It's like a, it's a group hazing. I'm trying to think of what else to to compare it to. Like Green Glass Door. It's kind of like that. I don't know what that is, but it can get the fuck it's out like of it. It's like I can take magic. apples through the Green Glass Door, but I can't take bananas. And it's like figuring out what the pattern is. Okay. Black Magic is a similar thing. If you're we've, sitting here wondering what the fuck. We've lost friends over Black Magic. Not supposed to be like that. It's a group activity that's fun that we did in college during theater practice. So bodies, bodies, bodies. Here's one aspect of this game that is uh, unfamiliar to me in any variation such as Werewolf. They start by sitting in a circle and slapping the next person. And they slap them in the face. And B is... uh, And they take shots. Oh, yes. They they slap... I know that's part of the game. I think they're just doing that. No, because then when they go to start the second round, they do it again. So I think before each round of body, bodies, bodies, oh, bodies, really? this is like the initiation. Other? I think you take a shot and then you slap. or I think you, you slap and you take a shot. When you get slapped, you take the shot maybe? I think so. Something like that. B is very reluctant. She won't do it to Pete Davidson. Uh, Which is he, fair. I'm not going to slap I a stranger. I would feel weird, yeah. And then he's like, here, I'll show you. And just fucking clocks Lee Pace in he the face. hard. Hard. Lee Pace stands up. Exits the room. Yep. Like he an just, adult. Okay, I'm going to bed like a grown <laughs> no, up. He doesn't because he still plays the game. He just, oh, he, that's just right. he just removes himself and calms down. Yep. Because we know that Pete that Lee Pace could probably murder Pete yeah. Davidson. Dude, I like that's the funniest thing is they get up right in each other's faces at one point. It's like you're really gonna fuck with Lee Pace. Yeah, dude. Like I, I think Pete, Pete Davidson's pretty tall. Uh but he like, seems but like Lee Pace. He's not Lee Pace. Yeah. Yeah, it's very funny the way just Lee Pace is just like, okay. Okay, <laughs> great. So they start playing, and the lights are all off. And, uh, you know, this is one part of the movie where I just have to, like, accept it's because of the movie. They're walking around with their phones out or with other sources of light. Whereas, you know, if I'm playing this game, I'm just going to let my eyes adjust and not have oh, a light. Oh, so you don't get found. So I don't get seen. But we have to see these characters in this fucking movie. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are using their phones. Alice 
has glow sticks around her and she is walking around just as like just a glowing light mm -hmm. and this was one of the things where the director talked about the individual ways of lighting and how alice the party girl just adorns herself like a lighthouse of sorts uh just with like these glow sticks which also had to be a continuity nightmare mm -hmm. but it's just because like she's the happy-go-lucky fun one she's kind of like a beacon for her friends yeah. as the least toxic of them uh but yeah so she's just walking around but then eventually someone yells bodies 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 and greg has been found dead yeah and he's laying there immobile and we're like what's going on and like they're like wait why isn't greg moving mm -hmm. and and they're like oh my god holy shit and then yeah he's laying there for a while eyes open still as a fucking log uh pete davidson takes a beer bottle taps his nuts nut sack uh, yeah tap uh, nut tap sack tap and that gets him to move he's he's not actually dead i thought i they got me i was like okay we're starting yeah he's dead we're gonna get it no he actually was not dead yet. He's probably he's just using his big lungs, probably. Just <laughs> yeah. <there>. Just... <laughs> <laughs> so they're trying to figure out who it is. Uh, this just devolves into an argument. I mean, it's every game of mafia or werewolf where it's like, oh, see, you're doing that thing that you always do where you're kind of like laughing nervously and like, no, I'm not. Why would it be me? It's totally him. It's that first round, which I think is always the worst part of these games where oh, you have sure. nothing to go off of. Mm -hmm. So it's everyone just wildly like throwing out accusations yeah. and trying to muddy the waters. Pete Davidson saying the best offense is a good defense over and over no, again. No, that's Lee Pace oh, I'm saying sorry, no, it's it. Lee Pace. And, and then Pete, Pete Davidson is like, but what does but, that mean? But explain that. Like, well, the best offense is a good deal. And they just, they just keep going. He keeps teasing him. And eventually Lee Pace is like, oh, I get it. You guys are fucking You're with fucking me. You're fucking with me. Uh, I'm going to go to bed. Yeah, this that's is when, when he, he goes to bed. He's just, he's done with this. this yeah. Is... And so he just leaves and removes himself from the situation. Pete Davidson just goes ham on his fucking girlfriend, Emma, being like, he just opens up on her. Oh and my, yeah, like, this... You don't have any original thoughts. Or like, I forget what prompts this. It, it It's something about like her using her acting skills to Oh yeah, where avoid... they're like, oh, it, it definitely is her because she remember she's an actor. She can so cry she on can... cue, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, I think this is the gaslighting conversation. Yeah, where she says that, oh, I mean, something happens where Alice is like, is this why you guys never have sex? That's so right. Personal information is brought into the game the, That's the I mean. it's, fake uh, yeah. arguments become real and pete davidson ends up fucking smashing a glass because mm -hmm. he gets so pissed because everyone's just like i vote he's the killer uh because they're just annoyed at him but yeah this is when he's at, scary of this part when he smashes that glass it's and he's like, like fuck this game cocaine it's very scary. rage yeah because yeah. he's they're most of them are on coke yeah um <laughs> yeah poor b was sitting there eating a cake and after like a whole bunch of bites, they're like that. That there's weed. Oh, in by that, the way, so there's you know. weed in it. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that got hurt. Oh yeah, I, I thought it was uh, worthwhile to bring this up, like we did last time in the last episode. But Alice is, uh, well, B has the cake, and then she like really loosens up, and she's dancing with Lee Pace, like you said, because they're both kind of the outsiders of yeah, the Yeah, I think they Everyone probably else have it instant bond because they're just the odd ones out. they don't know everyone else like they do and alice gets like immediately jealous defensive at yeah, least like oh you i think later she's like oh yeah you do come here and you just immediately start dancing with my boyfriend it's like she came here with another woman like i don't know how interested in lee face well that you she know would be. could be I mean, by but i know but still, still it's, it's also like else. she's here yeah. with someone it's just, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, I think it's it's good to remember those moments where Alice is kind of uh, snotty or aggressive. Mm -hmm. There, I think she's the one who is saying like Emma is the one who always cries. And yeah. it's just like, so, because later on, she's just so fucking funny. But uh, again, I think she is the least toxic of the group. But okay, so Pete Davidson is voted out and leaves. And he just leaves and the power goes out too right around here. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Uh, because they're like, is is David fucking with us? No, that's called a hurricane. And mm -hmm. so it's it's down to the five girls playing the game, and they start walking around. This is when it's just like all oh, this fucking beautiful sound design. Yeah. All oh, that hurricane, that slosh now and rain. Now it's really dark. It's real dark. It's so good. So uh, B is by this like kind of window. It's almost like a bay window kind mm -hmm. of, and she sees Pete Davidson outside for some reason, and. 
she notices he's walking kind of weird and then we we realize oh his neck's all fucked up and yeah, he hits he the, window, the window and his throat is his slit, throat slit and he falls to the ground and like everyone runs out and oh my god pete davidson's dead for real yep uh, cue panic like instantly this movie goes zero to 60 in terms of how little everyone trusts each other it (laughs) feels like because they all instantly suspect greg at first for sure uh they they kind of regroup in the car but the car battery died because b had like left a a A light on it was was like the mirror light which i feel like in a lot of new cars wouldn't kill it but 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 they established they're like this window won't go up it seems like a shitty car yeah even though sophie's rich i don't know how that i mean she was cut off yeah so they do establish that like yeah this car could uh be a piece of shit and and not work Mm -hmm. um but yes they are they are very suspicious of greg because after all else has only known him uh two there weeks only be one car uh the other car was taken by max oh everyone else showed up in the same car with max and he took it when he left <laughs> okay max strikes again got it okay <laughs> so they're they're suspecting greg he's she's alice has only known him for two weeks and there's a argument about uh how well does she know him she doesn't know his middle name but that's something that you don't talk about yeah, for she goes, a long they, time. You don't tell someone your middle name for like a while. <laughs> she just gets so defensive. She it's... claims that it can't be him because he's a Libra moon. Yeah. Also, what about Jordan? She was gone checking the generator for like a while. So like, where was she that whole time? And Emma's an actress, so she can yeah, and once again, do Emma, things. Yeah. But then I like that they're like, come on, she's not that good. We all saw <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, we all she saw it. In. She wasn't that good. We, I don't know why we keep saying she's so good. Uh, Emma even like just takes some Xanax and like tries to she, go to sleep. You know and, what? She had the right idea. Yeah, she's just, just like, I'm Xanax gonna Xanax and let it all sleep blow through over. this. But they, they grab her and, and take her to go find Greg, yes. who's not in their room. He's not in Alice and Greg's room, even though he said he was going yeah, to sleep. Yeah, even though he said he was going to bed. So that's suspicious. And, and they instead, also find his go bag. They find a go bag, which has lights and knives knife. and a fucking map with the location circle. Mm, yeah, so they are all freaking out. They find Greg laying in, is it like a racquetball court? Or it's a, a basketball court or a racquetball court? I think court? it's a racquetball that court where it's like the in square the shape, really high walls Mm -hmm. and he's like sleeping in the center of the court he has a light therapy mask it looks like something out of the purge movies i think our actually one of our sponsors this week offers light therapy products oh nice way to work uh, that in on charge (laughs) (laughs) that's right bond charge does have light therapy products along with all kinds of other products to help you sleep better perform better have more energy the list is endless James and I particularly love their blue light glasses. If you're watching the video version of this, you'll see that I have on their computer glasses, which have clear lenses and help with headaches, sore eyes, eye strain, and fatigue. You can use these during the day if you work with screens or under artificial light. James has on the blue light blocking glasses, which are amber colored and help with poor sleep, low energy, and even jet lag. These are meant to be used about two to three hours before bed. As two people who spend a lot of time on the computer for work and sometimes have really wacky sleep schedules because of it, we really appreciate having these around to give our eyes a much needed break. On Charge has tons of stylish frames that have been featured in GQ and Vogue, and their glasses are tested to ensure they actually work so that you're getting your money's worth. They come in both prescription and non-prescription, and they even have reading glasses too. If you want to try out Bond Charge products, you can go to bondcharge.com slash deadmeat and use coupon code deadmeat to save 20% off. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash deadmeat. Use the coupon code deadmeat to save 20%. Our next sponsor this week is Babbel. I think all of us who only speak one language fluently have that familiar nagging feeling that we either should have taken a foreign language at high school or college, or if we did, that we should have stuck with it into adulthood. But there's good news. It's never too late to start with Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, you can finally cross learning that new language 
off your list. Babbel offers German, which is my second language, and it's a totally doable way to help keep it all fresh. They offer 14 different languages, including Spanish, Italian, and French. Babbel even has speech recognition technology to help you improve your accent and pronunciation. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash deadmeat. That's babbel.com slash deadmeat for up to 55% off your subscription. Our last sponsor this week is Surfshark VPN. A VPN is a tool that improves your online privacy and protects you from hackers. It basically acts as a shield and hides your IP address so everything you do online stays private. Whether it would be reading the news, streaming some shows, listening to podcasts, you name it. Plus, if you use a VPN, you can virtually travel the world from the comfort of your own home, and Surfshark gives you over 100 countries to choose from. Once you change your virtual location, you'll be able to bypass censorship and restrictions, find your favorites on Netflix, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, or other streaming services, and even access new libraries to watch even more content. Can't see a YouTube video because of your location? Use Surfshark VPN. Can't watch that new horror movie because it's not streaming in your country? Use Surfshark VPN. Try Surfshark today totally risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash deadmeat. Enter promo code deadmeat for 83% off and three extra months free. You heard me right, three extra months for free. That's surfshark.deal slash dead meat. Nice thing about this movie is little things are established. Earlier on, B was walking around and there was just a shot of Greg like meditating in the background. So yeah. they wake him up and he said, oh, what's, this is one of my favorite fucking parts. They wake up Greg and he's like, uh, he had his earplugs in so they he couldn't hear them yelling for him. And he's like, oh, are you guys pl- still playing werewolf? He calls it <laughs> yeah. werewolf, which I think is a, a, a Tip to like the generational that makes gap. Me feel old and bad. Yeah, he would know the game as a werewolf, or at least call it that. Uh, and then, and then Greg, six foot five, Lee Pace, is like, ah! and he starts chasing <laughs> these girls around the racquetball course, and they're all screaming and, bloody. And murder. he's like laughing, screaming, pretending he's a werewolf, and they are screaming, they are crying, crying, terrified so of this man, <laughs> and it's. So fucking funny looking back yeah. at just how mirthful he was yeah. playing the werewolf <laughs> and they are fucking scared shitless. This guy is about to murder them. But then that's them. why they all, I think that's when he realized that they all have fucking knives and shit. He's like, what's going what on here? What the fuck actually is going on? He slaps the knife out of Dude, one of their he hands. he disarms Jordan so really fucking fast. fast. It's kind of scary. It's scary and awesome. Yeah. But. Here's the thing. That's when they all start climbing on him like a jungle gym. (laughs) Yes. Making Chelsea very jealous. Yeah. And so he realizes that this is a bad situation. He disarms Jordan. Yeah. Uh, I believe he maybe gets the blade at one point, but is like very defensive with it. Yeah. He tries to get everyone to put the knives down. At one point, someone charges him and he like kind of shoulder tosses them. He basically throws them off. Yeah. And they hit the wall and he immediately goes over to them. He's like, oh my God, are you okay? Like he is clearly just trying to de-escalate the situation and then he gets hit in the back of the head with a a barbell a kettlebell kettlebell. yeah b twice and she it's brutal he just beams him right in the head with the kettlebell him and jordan both see the knife and he's afraid she's gonna grab it and use it on him so he goes for it to keep it from them and he gets fucking brained yeah and gets murdered and this is like so for the rest of the movie you know, I'm mostly on B's side, but she murdered this guy. Yeah. And, like, it, it, they're all on drugs, which is probably a factor, but I just, I can't like B because she murdered this man. It's, yeah, it's fair. I think it also is, like, it says a lot about her character where I think ultimately she does want to be liked by this group. Okay. And she knows and understands that Greg is like the outsider. So like if she's doing the social calculus here and maybe part of her still does genuinely think that he did it too. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, it makes sense to me. I that, wonder that how I'd feel if one of the other characters had done this. 
like it would make things less complicated for me for sure yeah because then b would be kind of scot-free but like greg is awesome and she murders him. I know. And it's so sad. And then uh, what I really like about this is that it shows the biases of uh, these characters. Because Oh, my God. Yes. Where jo- Jordan is like statistically. Statistically, he's the one who would be most likely to have done this. He's like a white guy who's a vet. He's a war vet, right? And Alice is like, no, he's a veterinarian's <laughs> assistant. <laughs> he's a vet. He's a fucking veterinarian. Why do you call him G.I. Joe then? Look, Look at, at him. him. And then he throws up on herself. She also. does. Yeah. <laughs> but I do like that. They acknowledge like that. This the statistics aren't everything. And you can't just assume the older white guy is the killer. <laughs> yeah. Because he was super chill and cool. And now he's dead. And the funnier thing is like, so, you know, spoiler, he's not the killer. Obviously his go bag, dude. He brought a go bag because he's in his 40s. He's a man in his 40s, dude. Who wants to be prepared for a hurricane hurricane and brought a map because he probably grew up using maps. Yeah. And just in case reception went out, he wanted to know where he was. It's so funny and and so tragic to think about. These idiots are so unfamiliar with this way of being an adult that they are immediately suspicious of it and kill him for it. It's so tragic and so funny. And I just can't stop thinking of him running around chasing them as a werewolf. (laughs) Oh God. R.I.P. Lee Pace. Oh, it's so funny. This movie's so funny. God, it's so fucking funny. Um, (laughs) <laughs> I just wrote the vibes are in shambles. It's also a very tense scene. It like is. that scene is a great horror scene because it like is really tense. You yeah. see what's happening. You see how like as he the realizes this. Gas when she when he got hit in the head. Yeah, that we that kind got of got a reaction. reaction. Yeah, but like that's a well done scene of tension that is also very funny, especially in retrospect. Oh god. Oh man. Okay. So yeah, now it's like they're all. I don't know, they're all fucking arguing with each other. There's a whole scene where it's like Emma always makes shit about herself and she's crying and blah, blah. She ends up kissing Sophie when they're alone together. She's like, I thought that's what it was. That's what you wanted. And Sophie's like, no, it's not always about. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, she's like, yeah, this is what I wanted right now in this (laughs) moment. Like, fuck off. Yeah. Uh, Sophie then like storms off. And I think she goes into like a, uh, like a, game room kind of where she she knows that david's like hidden drugs in Mm. some of these board games because they're really old friends so she like finds a basically a ping pong ball that she that's like cut in half that she or it's like a plastic eyeball it's like one of those eyeballs oh yeah that's hanging up on the podcast set that's like cut in half and there's some kind of drugs that she takes and she also gives some to emma yeah uh during that that uh conversation but uh yeah she's off the wagon now unfortunately yeah I get a lot of stress here. Yeah. They just watch someone just, get like, murdered. Emma just like leaves and takes those drugs with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get it. They they did just watch someone get murdered, and like one of their other friends is dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty stressful. God, I can't even. I can't read my notes. Well, it, pretty soon after this is when um, Alice finds Emma dead. Yeah. At the bottom of the some bottom stairs. Of the stairs. Did she fall? Was she pushed? We don't know. Yes, Alice found her at least from our perspective with B. B walks in yeah. to Alice screaming over her jordan and uh sophie come in and so it's down to these four yeah they instantly get really suspicious of b because she's the other uh, kind of unknown to this group yeah they're kind of sitting back to back uh yeah they're all sitting in the room it reminded me of slumber party massacre i don't know if it was an intentional reference but it just reminded me of that uh scene which is also or uh uh oh my god what's it called the like that werewolf josh rubin movie not werewolves within werewolves within yeah where it's all like we're staying in the same room oh yeah so it's the four of them and uh yeah like you said they start to become suspicious of b because how long has sophie known her they end up after an argument they toss her outside yeah shut the door they start locking all the doors well it's also because they realize that b had been untruthful about some of her background yeah so apparently like b met sophie at what I forget what university they go to Utah maybe something and she like isn't listed as a graduate mm-hmm. and then um is this also the reveal about her job or is that later yeah like, it's B something said she was like... working at a game store but she actually got fired uh a weekend and Sophie's been dropping her off to go 
at the mall to go to work and B is like, I just sit I just in the, sit the food, food court, court and wait. I just I want you want... to like think I have a job so you're not disappointed in me. But yeah, she like doesn't show up on the school's list of students. So that's suspicious. And then they, they kick her outside. They lock her outside in the hurricane. Her, full on torrential rain at this point. Yeah, B runs to the car and forces the window down with her hands because it's broken. Mm -hmm. And so that's when she gets in the car. She gets a change of clothes. At this point, I'm sleeping in that car. Oh, that yeah. seems real nice. Yeah. A car in the rain sounds fucking wonderful. I don't think you're I'd... shaking your head. There are too many ways to get to a car. Yeah, that's oh. the thing is like considering everything that's going on, I wouldn't. Oh, it's I the, the whole murder thing. I wouldn't be sleeping at all. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. But in general, yeah, it'd be nice to sleep in a car. It just seems very cozy. But then while she's changing and is like kind of going through her stuff in the car, she finds a strange pair of underwear in the car yeah that's not hers and she puts together because remember earlier when she picks up i think jordan's bra and is looking at it and jordan makes some like remark about like we're not here to look at my bra oh, or that's whatever. right and yeah. this is matching isn't it's it it's matching so, so she, she finds jordan's together, underwear yeah. in uh sophie's stuff yeah yeah um, she heads back to the house and peeking through a window, sees Jordan get a gun. Yeah. Even though earlier they were like, is there a gun in the house? And they said, no. No, they're rich, but David's parents are rich, but their politics check out or something. They, yeah, <laughs> that's like, the line, which say. I'm like, I feel like gun ownership is kind of its own thing outside of like, and, and later it is revealed. It doesn't, the rich people have guns, they yeah, say, yeah. which I think is probably true. But I don't know. Uh, I don't think guns are necessarily owning a gun. I don't know enough rich people to say if that's true. <laughs> I, just, I don't think owning a gun is necessarily indicative of other politics. Yeah, I feel like that's a lot of that's more indicative of where in the country you might live. Yes, too. for I sure. Don't know. I, I don't want to have that argument or debate on the podcast. <laughs> Or in the comments. Everyone <laughs> shut the fuck up. Leave it, don't yell at us. Uh, so she sees Jordan get a gun. And then she like gets back into the house. Through... She goes through a dog door. Which it's we like, see it's earlier. It's a dog tunnel, dude. It is kind of like a little tunnel. It's a little fucking critter tunnel. And I think it's you're just asking for raccoons and other little critters. Mm -hmm. It's got like the fucking car wash fucking... Oh, yeah, you could just have, like, a raccoon crawl. Yeah, there's no, like, door or anything. It's it's like a dog. She, like, crawls through it. It also seems like there's, like, insulation on the side. I don't know. It's a weird situation, but yeah. she gets back in the house is what I'm saying. Yeah, and, and that's what she says. Jordan has a gun. She yeah. tells her, like, oh, I saw her grab a gun. Jordan turns out her pockets. She she says she doesn't. Yeah, she she to prove she doesn't have the gun, she empties her pockets, which also reveals she had the slip of paper with the X on it. Oh, yeah. So Jordan was the killer originally in the game. Yeah, she's in the game. Yeah. Uh, this is when B is like, listen, I, I here's what's really with me. My mom has borderline personality disorder. We saw in the beginning on their way there, she kept getting texts from yeah. her mom. So she's very close to her mom and she had to she's, leave college. She had to drop out of school to take care of to her To take mom. care of her mom. Yeah. So she's explaining why she isn't the person who she said she was. And That's just why like, she's not listed as a graduate. Mm -hmm. Right. And Jordan's not buying it. Alice is just going with whoever said yeah, the last thing. Yeah, and Alice sympathizes with... Um, <laughs> With B saying her mom has borderline personality disorder by saying, oh my gosh, like mental health stuff is so important. Like I have body dysmorphia. Apparently the director overheard Rachel Sennett saying that to the other actors on, on set. Uh, I don't know if Rachel Sennett was saying it authentically in or in a joking way, real. but the director was like, can we use that in the movie? Yeah. And they did. Which and is, it's, it's such a funny hilarious. thing. Cause it's like, Body dysmorphia is real, and so yeah. I, it's something I struggle with. Yeah, me too. And but you don't not the bring time. not you don't bring. That's what makes it so funny. It's like you don't bring that up at that point in that conversation. And then yeah, this so this conversation is like probably the big one. Yeah. Uh, this is the one conversation where it is the most overt, like social commentary you get a lot of buzzwords yeah. in here but i think by this point they've earned it yeah so when they're saying that that's ableist yeah someone calls someone else a psychopath and they shoot back like that's ableist mm -hmm. and it's I think at one point when people are accusing sophie sophie's like well it kind of looks bad you're all ganging up on me because what i'm like angry and black and then that's when alice is like 
look, like I'm I'm an ally, so I get how like and she just digs herself into this hole for like an uncomfortably long time. Yeah, because Sophie's talking funny. about how it's uh everyone's accusing her because she's been doing drugs now and she's like, What, David and other people can do drugs and, and it's not a big deal, but when like but the, when the the black girl addict does drugs, like it's a problem. It's gonna make her into a killer, yeah, right? Yeah. Look, I I I'm an ally and I totally get how it looks that way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this is when all the that backstory comes out that you kind of gleaned, but now you get the the details about the three uh, overdoses, how Jordan had to ride in the ambulance with Sophie, about how they, her friends, told Sophie's parents and are the reason she got cut off. You get all these relationships fleshed out, yeah. even though you got the sense of these things earlier on. This is when they're talking about how everyone there is rich, but Sophie and David are rich, rich. Yeah. And yeah. they are, like, on another level. Yeah. Um, and apparently earlier that day, I think before Sophie went to pick up B, mm -hmm. that's when Sophie and Jordan fucked. Jordan tells B this. Yeah, Jordan says that and says, like, you know, check her text. Mm -hmm. She's like, uh, you, you can't trust her. She's been lying about this And then the whole Sophie's time. like, no, 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 like, you can't, like, don't, like, Jordan's just lying. She's trying to get to you. But, mm -hmm. like, Sophie knows that Jordan's telling the truth because she found the underwear in the car. And I think, I forget who says feelings are facts. And Jordan's like, no, facts are facts. So you get the sprinkling of that in there. But, like. Then this is the, uh, then everything kind of turns on. Alice, I forget what prompts this this turn. Oh no, oh. it's okay. It's because Sophie tells Alice, like, you know what? Jordan hate listens to your podcast. So you're defending her, but she listens to your podcast just to make fun of it. She thinks it's very bad. Yeah. And Alice is heartbroken. Alice is devastated. She says a podcast is a lot of work. Yeah. She's sobbing and is ranting about like a podcast is a lot of work. You have to maintain a Google calendar and organize all the guests and I'm crying laughing because I literally have had this exact breakdown before just by myself when I'm stressed about making this show because it's true okay and then right on fucking cue I'm thinking to myself but what's the podcast about and B is like What's your what podcast? What is your podcast? About? Yeah. And she goes, "It's about hanging out with your funniest and smartest friend." And Jordan just can't help herself from rolling her eyes. She did like vid, like audible groans. Ugh. And then Hallis is like, "Did you, you just even, groan?" Yeah, you can't even stop yourself from groaning. It's just And then so yeah, they're arguing with each other. Alice says that That's what Al Alice is like, "Oh yeah, well Jordan you pretend that your parents aren't rich. You're upper middle class. Yeah. And it is like the lowest blow of this whole scene. Because she's and, like, you pretend that you worked yourself up yeah, from you nothing. Yeah, you pretend you, you, yeah, you came from nothing and you worked for all this. Your parents are professors. And Jordan's like, at, at a, a public, public university. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's so goddamn funny. Yeah. And everything uh, is a so Alice tense. Says, Alice says that, Jordan, nobody likes you all the times that you get messed up and are worried that people don't like you because you're a bitch. That's true. Nobody likes you because yeah. you're mean. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's revealed that Jordan does, in fact, have a gun, and she shoots Alice in the fucking leg. Yeah, she shoots her in the leg. It's right and then, after the public school comment. Then Alice is like... Oh my God, you shot me. And Jordan's like, no, I didn't. She, she's, <laughs> no, these I people didn't. are such pathological. Lies. She's holding the gun. And it's like, no, I didn't. Yeah. And Alice also says, I've never been I've shot never before. I've never been shot before. So it really hurts. And then they all are struggling over this gun. My stomach is in my ass watching this scene. Yes. Because it's like just this tangle of people wrestling over this extremely loaded gun. The sound design here is really good because it's just all like arms and legs and, and clothes. Wrestling. And rustling and it's just it's so stressful and it um, happens twice because they they have a, a a struggle and then separate and i'm like oh okay. thank god and then they struggle again yeah and then the gun goes off and alice, alice is dead r.i.p alice shot through the chin yeah i know and i was like fuck i know it had to happen but so now <laughs> we're um trying to sophie and b it's mostly sophie is trying to like okay just jordan 
put the fucking gun down. And then she's like, okay, stop walking towards me. He's like, okay, but put the gun down. So they're just kind of walking backwards towards the stairs. And then it's like basically just chaos. I forget. Um, they go upstairs. I don't know how B winds up upstairs, but she like tackles Jordan. She like goes Jordan. another way upstairs. Okay, yeah. yeah, she tackles Jordan trying to disarm her. The gun's going off. Uh, they end up just tossing Jordan over the railing. B, B throws her over the railing. She and this one, self-defense. this table. Yes. Which I think was the table at the very beginning. And maybe I, I'm... Uh, I'm mistaken in what I saw, but I'm pretty sure. And if it's true, it's a very funny detail. That table down there they showed at the beginning is filled with batteries and flashlights, none of which are used because they're all just using their phones. That, that, that's all they know is their phones. Yeah, and it's just such a funny little detail. Oh, and that's the other thing is uh, they do find a headlamp in the go bag and yeah. Jordan wears it because she is the most no-nonsense. She mm -hmm. is the most like take action mm -hmm. she's the one who goes and gets the gun mm -hmm. she's the one who's always escalating things mm -hmm. and so that's why she has the headlamp and the, yeah the director would have to be like uh, uh i forgot that actress's name but be like can you point your light at the other actors so we can we can get them on camera yeah it's it's funny this movie it reminds me of how um i can think of like a couple other types of movies where like that new top gun all the actors had to learn how to film themselves and do sound and and like essentially edit themselves a lot of found footage movies that's and, was, it and yeah. it's also yep found footage blair witch obviously wreck Directors, those types of movies or uh, actors filming themselves mm -hmm. and their other actors a lot of hard work and uh when it works it's great yeah uh, uh, so yeah, Jordan, her last words are check her text, which is so <laughs> sad. So fucking Gen Z, <laughs> check her check text, her text as she dies. Uh, because of, like you said, with them using them as flashlights, their phones are all they know. Yeah, so then it's just Sophie and B and Sophie asks, did you do, did you murder David? Like, no, did you? Like, no, no, no. But then B asks, did you sleep with Jordan? And Knowing Sophie the says, answer. no, yeah. but B knows she did, so that it's like, okay, if you're lying about that, mm -hmm. I'm just going to assume you're lying about <laughs> everything else. Dawn finally comes. We yeah, finally, it's morning. It's morning. When that happened, I was taken aback. I was like, oh, shit. I was too. Light. I wondered, like, did we, how much time did we skip, you know? Uh, I think it just was about dawn time and, and uh, the rain has stopped. And I know the director has talked about, maybe uh, they thought about getting to dawn earlier so that they could have more light, but they decided to stick with the pure I, black. I and, like, yeah. It's such a good decision. For like decision. the very ending where it's dawn. Uh, yeah. She takes a little, uh, as opposed to a final girl circuit, more of a final girl stroll. Tour She's of the bodies. around seeing all the it's bodies, bodies, recap. bodies. Jordan's body, uh, the gun's not in her hand anymore, mm -hmm. so... Uh, and she's outside near David's body, which kicked everything off. And uh, Sophie grabs her. Oh, and by the way, importantly, David, uh, they I, I think they, they realize when they find his body, he was murdered with the sword. The, the, I don't think we mentioned the like saber that he uses. Oh, it's it was next, next to, to his him. body. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We forgot to mention that very the important sword, detail. Yeah. Um, that that Lee Pace had been using. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sophie grabs B from. She like sneaks up on her and grabs her, and now it's this tense thing where. And this is so funny too. How the, the things they find important in this final scene. Yeah. Where B is just like, let me just look at your phone. Let mm -hmm. me just look at your your texts. And there's this tense kind of like we're gonna exchange because i think b gets the gun at some point yeah yeah because b i she's forget like, give me your phone yeah that's right because she has the gun mm -hmm. um basically it, it, the details are not important there's like this big fucking they fight each other they end up in the pool the like gross hurricane water pool which mm -hmm. i thought was a nice detail it's all cloudy and gross compared to earlier it's the same like underwater shots the same, same music meat, too. same yeah. sound mm -hmm. yeah by this point both the gun and the phone are just like scattered, like they've both lost them, and they are both going after the phone yeah. and not the gun, which is so fucking funny. But they find a phone on the ground, and they're like, wait, this is not either of our phones. Like, this is who the fuck's phone is this? And they th look and they see Pete Davidson's body, and like, is this his, like, is this his phone? They use his temperature, like, pulls his eyelids back to unlock the phone, and that's what the. <laughs> 
thing that's open on his phone is his fucking it's camp. A it's a TikTok editor. that he made. It's it, like that the was tic- working on. He was working. He was in the middle of it. Because we TikTok. forgot to mention they were recording TikToks earlier. Oh, the, with yeah, this, they were like, all doing TikTok Bored at home song. Yeah. So, so they look and they see an in-processed ed- like TikTok that is being edited. And it's Pete Davidson trying to open a bottle of champagne with a sword and fucking slicing his neck open on accident. <laughs> I, I can't like have it laugh that hard in so long. It's the funniest ending to this. And I get maybe some people were disappointed that there wasn't a killer the entire time, but no, it's so, it's fucking, so funny fucking funny that these idiot self-centered people that this happened because so pete davidson accidentally slit his own throat it's so fun because he's just he's trying and then he's like doing it at different angles and it literally just bounces off his neck and he's like fuck <laughs> just- <laughs> they found his body they murdered greg out of suspicion emma was given those pills yeah emma gave her the emma was given the pills by and so Sophie. actually did fall she down the fell. stairs and die Alice was killed in the altercation with the gun. Yeah. Jordan killed in self-defense after she had the gun. Yeah. That's how everyone died. Yeah, they all just... <laughs> it's, it's so great. It's and so then, goddamn funny. And then, Chelsea... Max shows up. Max shows up. And, like, this... I kind of understand maybe how people felt when they saw us in Scream 5. Your reaction caused audible confusion to, in the people behind us. I think they were like... Are we supposed to know who this guy is? <laughs> no, like, no. This is just me being very excited that fucking Connor O'Malley shows up. Yeah, <laughs> Russell's face. Connor O'Malley is the mysterious Max and shows up at the very end of this with, like, a single line One of month. dialogue. What happened? What happened? <laughs> and um, so Connor O'Malley is the reason I'm wearing my hashtag Minion Squad shirt. Uh, cause he is, I think one of the funniest fucking people ever. I'm obsessed with him. Unhinged man. Unhinged comedy. Like not his YouTube channel. I don't recommend lightly to anyone. It's even too much for James. Most of the time. Most of the time. I think James just likes how hard he makes me laugh. Yeah. Um, he also, he's, he's, yeah. He's like, he, if you know him at all, you know him from either, Joe Parra talks with you, which he's a co-writer, I think also co-creator, and he plays the neighbor, uh, like the dad. And he's also in I think you should leave. He's in he's sketches. honk if you're horny honk and I think horny, you yeah. should leave. And he also writes for Seth Meyers. Um That's right. But uh he has one of the most maybe the most unhinged YouTube channel, and I think it is it's so fucking funny and disgusting. Like don't watch his videos while you're eating food. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'll say. But I adore him. And there's a video where he is wearing this exact shirt. My sister got me this because she also loves Connor. She had this um, airbrushed for me to look exactly like the one Connor has in his Minion Squad video where he's running around Wisconsin in like the middle of winter and uh, interviewing people on the street about Minions and trying to get people like really excited about Minions. Predating the the minion suits, yeah. This by was, many years. This was like, oh yeah, I forget how old that video is, but anyway, he's a gem. I was so goddamn excited to see him. <laughs> Just shows up, asks it's what the happened. Funniest person to me who could have showed up. And uh, then they get reception and all all the texts buzz in the phone and yeah. the last lies. I have reception. I have reception. <laughs> in the end. Yeah. Um. Really enjoyed this one. It's so good and zeitgeisty yes. in a way that's like really charming, and I think it'll age just as well as something like a Clueless or Scream, where it leans so hard into the time period in which it's being made that I think, weirdly, it just kind of will come full circle into being a little bit timeless. Because it's a time it, capsule. Yeah, it, it's like it'll be so fun to to revisit this. I think this will be one where. We always say that Scream feels cozy to us for some reason. I think this is going to be a very cozy movie for people um, as time goes by because it just evokes such a time and place. Yeah, and I would love to hear thoughts from our younger viewers and listeners, the the people who are depicted in the movie, uh, perhaps not as well off, or I don't know, maybe we got some rich... You, maybe. You know, hit up those sponsors. Yeah, but, go uh, subscribe to our Patreon. Yeah, do you feel as though this movie was authentic? Um, do you condescending? F- sure, maybe. Yeah. Does it was it triggering? <laughs> <laughs> I think that is used. It is, yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, cuz like I said, I think it is made in a way where it's like poking fun at these things, but it's not it's not the old man yell at clouds. It's not really 
um, shallow depictions, cartoonish depictions of youths and Gen Zers. And no one complains about being misgendered or any stupid shit like that. Oh, it, right. There's no like, oh, did you just assume my gender yeah, type bullshit? There's, hack there's no jokes, shit like, yeah, yeah. There's no hackiness to it. No, it's not mean about who these people essentially are. Like, it's not mean about the fact that, like, some of these characters are queer. Some of these characters aren't white. It is poking fun of the way that those characters talk about those things. Yeah. And that's, I think that's a very hard needle to thread. Definitely. And can only be done by people making a movie where there is, like, a fondness for, you know, you have to have an understanding of a generation and, like, um, kind of, like, like, yeah, like a generational attitude to be able to accurately parody it and poke at it without it just feeling mean yeah, or lazy. Exactly. I, I think they do it so well, and I'm just, uh, I don't know. It's one of my favorite types of humor is yes. addressing and engaging with social things and being able to, like, you know, almost walk up to a line maybe or, or just at least see – the different perspectives that make things funny without having that meanness to it or like, yeah, that condescension. I don't know. I I really like this movie. Uh, I like it more and more the more I talk about it. I want to see it again. I really want to see it again. And too. just laugh my ass off. Uh, it's just such good performances. So well, yeah. technically a made. A horror comedy that I like. The yeah. rare horror comedy that well, I like. Well, it's because it's like Scream in its application of comedy, I think. Yeah, I think I have finally figured out what makes or breaks a horror comedy for me. And it is that, like, are these characters all written where the the screenwriter is trying to be funny and therefore the characters are all cracking jokes and being funny? Or is it the screenwriter finding humor in the essence of who these people are? Like, ready or not. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's what this movie is doing is this movie understands why it, each of these characters are very, very funny and they're not like clowning around, you know, they're all playing it straight. It just, as opposed to like something like cooties or, uh, I know you're not as big of a fan as of, of like Tucker and Dale. Yeah. Yeah. Where because... those are like written to be jokey. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's, that's just a taste thing. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, yeah, I highly recommend it. Uh, even if you know the ending, I think it's worth watching because it's fucking hilarious and just a well-made movie. But I do hope that you went and saw it before you listen to this because that ending is such a funny it's reveal. So funny, yeah. Russell was silently laughing his ass off over there. I'm so <laughs> sad that he had it ruined for him. Yeah. I would watch this right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would I watch really it right would, now. I really wish it was, it was fucking streaming. streaming. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I'll nab that Blu-ray up as soon as it's available. Yeah. And, uh, okay, what do we got? Are we still doing Survivor next? I would like to do Survivor next. Okay. Yeah, so I got to get to work on that. Because we could, we could do Barbarian and then Survivor after that. Let's maybe do that, actually. Because okay. now everyone... Like, Barbarian's so hot right now. And I'm so worried about get, it getting spoiled. So yes, I feel that like too. I want to see it. I'm tired of living in fear. So, yeah. okay, well, let's do Barbarian next week, and then we'll do our big Survivor extravaganza, because I know people have been wanting another game, and so have I. It'll also give us a chance to get back into Survivor mode as the show comes back on, yeah. and really reacclimate us with, you know, just the flavor and the, the tone of it. I feel like once we're in it, we know Survivor, but, like, it's been a few months since last season. Yeah. I'm a little, you know, I don't want to give... I miss. I, I can't it. even think of a good uh, Survivor analogy. That's how cold I am mm-hmm. right now. So, but don't worry, you'll get it in the Survivor episode. I I've seen some such lovely comments on that of like, you guys really get Survivor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Anything else? Social media at Deadme James on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And I'm at Carebeck, C A R E B E C C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, DeadmeatStore dot com. We should recreate the uh, like board in the house TikTok. Oh my gosh. Maybe with like a Freddy glove or something. I don't know. Okay. I'm gonna think about it. But uh yeah, merch, you already said it? We're good? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Gressel, for live producing this one. Yeah. Sorry you got spoiled. Uh I, I don't care. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> yeah. And uh thanks for doing it a second time, even yeah. after our aborted one yesterday. <laughs> that was again all my fault. Okay. It's okay, it happens. All right, until next time, everybody. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. <laughs>